Please subscribe to Bear, 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 and I had fun. Smash the like button. Goodbye. Hail to all. Hail to the Phantom Menace. I am making a video, and I got Tommy here with me. How you doing, Tommy? Doing all right, man. How's it going? Yeah, um, yeah, we just burning the candle at both ends like usual. Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker, an entertaining, albeit overturned installment. Yeah, I want to send a shout out to Gary at Nerd Erotic because he shared this in a Twitter post. So me and Tommy, we're just gonna break it down a little bit. Hail, Nerd Erotic. Hail, Gary at Nerd Erotic. Hail. The internet is not going to be happy. As soon as I left the theater on premiere night for the opening of The Rise of Skywalker, geeky rumblings from across the galaxy started to make themselves heard. The energy from the angry, shaky setting up of webcams by sci-fi YouTube channel crews was almost palpable enough to blow whatever that word is, too, smithereens, in a way not unlike what happened to Alderaan. I think he spelled Alderaan wrong. What do you think, Tommy? Yeah, I think he spelled that wrong. Alderaan's not spelled with the E-R-O-N after the Alderaan. Or, whatever planet got toasted in this, the ninth installment of the franchise. So he mentions that, which sounds like the planet Alderaan on, um, what was the planet that was destroyed? That was Alderaan, right? That was, that was, that was Alderaan. Yeah, yeah. Alderaan was the home to Princess Leia and, uh, her, I guess you would say her stepfather and stepmother. Right. So he got some things wrong in this article, but yet he wants to criticize a very well-known and respected YouTuber. Well, the fact is that for anyone aware that Star Wars fan base is the wild west of the internet, a place in which frontier justice prevails. Women are ever a side plot and the slightest questioning of any concept dreamt up by the creator, George Lucas himself, on thin ice is a shootable offense. Well, if you would have been reading certain autobiographies, you'd know that George Lucas isn't happy with the current state of Star Wars, Disney Star Wars. Unbelievable. Their chief is none other than the face of the YouTube channel called nerd erotic by by a beardy 30 year old boy who appears weekly before a sea of Marvel, Marvel comic figurines screaming about the major plot holes on uh, number one Gary don't scream you got that completely well, wrong these goddamn these no good freaking man babies with their little beards and their toys all over the place they really they really they've got me frustrated they got me frustrated I'm so angry and I can't stand it yeah, Tommy. Um, yeah, the whole bunch of that that whiny whiny baby complaining by um, oh Raylos that didn't like the movie. Wow, you know this 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 author here. Um, I guess they are out of Istanbul. More like they're out of their minds. Yeah, out of their minds. So yeah. The chief is none other than, yeah, we got to that part. Plot. So basically, inconsistencies in franchise essentially about space wizards secretly related to each other. Plot holes such space wizards. That, that reminds me of something. Who used space wizards before when they were um, critiquing Star Wars movies? That reminds oh me of something. Who was that? Man, I'll probably wake up in the 
Well, I am in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wake up when I wake up when the next time I go to sleep, eh? <laughs> it, it reminds me of that guy from Young Guns. Dog. Dog. You see the size of that chicken? It's all the peyote that they're taking. That's why they can't remember exactly what they're doing. That's why they're so crazy. Actually, they should probably do more of it. Maybe they would calm down. Man. Plot holes such as how a female character could learn how to fight using a sword unless we are shown a 20 minute long Rocky style montage in which a man shows her how to do it. Man, this guy is a, he's a, this, oh man, this is the shilliest of the shill of the shilliest I've ever seen. The shilly act from uh, Star Trek would be uh, jealous. Yeah. You think maybe he's trying to unseat John Campia? Yes, he might. He might. Interestingly, the man is usually a beardy type, far too old to be entertained by magic. Um, I find I find the magic extremely lacking in Disney and you new Star Wars. Yeah. Don't you find it lacking, Tommy? Well, the unimagineers over there at Disney just they have a way of just like destroying everything and just making it so boring I mean you had something exciting like a nice Tyco racetrack and they turned it into a broken down old rusted Tonka truck hmm an astute uh, observation our inconsistency such as why no one finds time in the whole nine movie epic to sit down and eat a sandwich between battles. And speaking of sandwiches, Adam Driver playing the role of a uh, strompy. What what is strompy? Is that a word? Strompy? I don't even think that is a word. I don't think it's a strompy Vader wannabe. Um I don't know what strompy is. Is that a combination of stormtrooper and trompy? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> With delicious perfection. Oh, they call that delicious perfection. Is a treat that we are never allowed to fully enjoy in the stream. His recommendation as Kylo Ren, which was inevitable, but nonetheless entirely wholesome and satisfactory. I, well, okay, satisfactory? Man, I want to see this movie, this guy scene, don't you? Sounds very interesting. I'll tell you what, that, that's another typo for him because there is a stompy. Yeah, stompy. No str- yeah, there's a stompy, which is an adjective of stompier and stompy. Yeah, but there's no stromper. Yeah, so. stromper, strompy. Um, yeah, I think he meant stompy. He, he must know. He must know Brie Larson because he's got a lot of holes in that cheese. Ooh man. Um, beat Swiss cheese with those holes, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. It is dealt with in a way that is instantly bulldozed by Return of the Jedi style panning from one scene to another. I definitely want to know the movie he watched because I didn't see any Return of the Jedi style panning from anything in The Rise of Skywalker. This guy's freaking delusional. As though a buzzer has gone off indicating that it is time for the movie to finish. The trailers are coming, the Ewoks roar, and the fanfare of the final scene's ascent. Is this guy criticizing the return of the Jedi? A very good possibility. Maybe he has unresolved issues from his childhood that he just can't seem to get past, and he's got to pick on something from another time. Hmm, yeah. You know... They have counseling for um, stuff like that. Just find your category and pick it, my friend. Just as terrible as the role of Ray, Disney really succeed in carrying an almost computer game style plot line with force magic alone. Um, the force magic? The force I don't magic think... is all around. Yeah, I've, I've never heard the force referred to as magic. Oh, yeah, and you got her name wrong. Her name is Daisy Riddlin. Riddlin. Yeah, Daisy Riddlin. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, magic. Um, sort of like magic from the Magic Kingdom that is magic-less because they made Star Wars really, really, really bad. Magic alone, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, back to the article. Her introduction reveals the Jedi determined to push the limit. Uh, um, wait a minute. Reveals a Jedi. Reveals a Jedi determined. Um, a lot of us don't really consider her a Jedi because she didn't go through any training. Right? There was no training. There was no ceremony. Nope. No ceremony. No nothing and like one that. Of, and, and going back to the EU, one of the things that a Jedi always has to do on the completion of their training is to create a lightsaber before they can even consider themselves a Jedi. So did she create a lightsaber before she went into her final battle to become a Jedi? No, one mysteriously appeared right out of the sand, out of the ether. Oh, good God. I mean, that just seems to break canon from all different kinds of angles. And you're mm -hmm. talking about canon that was not only available in the books, but also everything that was available in the video games as well. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. There was no canon because there was no source material. Yeah. Um... Yeah, there was, don't, let's not forget, KK said it herself, there was no source material to pull from. Yeah. Hey, and you know, a horse is a horse, of course, of course. Oh, and, and Disney, lightsabers don't grow from the ground. And number one, it's, it's pretty much desert out there, so probably a bunch of scrub and stuff grows out there, if anything grows, on Tatooine. Because it's a desert planet, you know? And so you can't grow lightsabers, and they don't grow from from sand. They just don't do that. Oh my God! Gotta love it. The mouse hard at work doing absolutely. Oh nothing. man! I wonder how much Disney played that paid this guy. Whatever it was, it was way too much. Just as terrific as the role Ray is, Daisy Ridley succeeds in carrying an almost computer game style plot, 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 plot. Previously in The Last Jedi, okay, calling, marking. I'm just refinding my place because I didn't mark it. And this is just like off the hook, you know, out of the dark, making a video. Desirable and return to the idea that being a Jedi not only something chemical, about something chemical. How is it chemical? I.e. metachlorians. Um, what do metachlorians got to do with chemicals? Um, well, midichlorians are actually supposed to be symbiotic life forms that live right. within a, everybody in the Star Wars universe. So, Did this guy not watch certain movies? Did this guy not read information from the Star Wars book that categories all the information? This sounds like somebody who probably just skimmed titles and just came to his own conclusions about everything and then decided to write about it. But then, then has the nerve to sit there and call out everybody else that didn't like it. Yeah, and um, call a very fine guy, very good person, one of my favorite YouTubers, as just call, call them names. You got to call someone names because you don't agree with what they're saying. I'm sorry, but you've lost the argument. When you call someone names, you lose the argument. You're welcome, Scott. <laughs> yes, you're welcome, Scott. <laughs> wow. Let's see here. Um, man, chemicals? Metachlorians? Oh, they were life forms. You didn't read that part? Referred to by the fans. Turned off by prequels. Uh, you, you didn't get some things right there, my friend. The M word. Nor something paternal in the case of Luke, but something quite as stoic that one could attune themselves to in accordance with one's natural capabilities. Uh, did he read a Harry Potter movie or something? Read a book? I, I, think he, I think he's got a few different like movies mixed up and everything. I think yeah. he's thinking that I think he thinks that Daisy, Daisy Ridlin fell into the Vatic chemicals at the Ace plant and came out with white face paint and the ability to use the Force. Right. So it's, it's a combination of Batman, Star Wars, and probably a few other movies. I think he's got some things twisted. Man, they're in the loony papers, you know? Alas, no. She is Emperor Palpatine's granddaughter. Oh. And... 
he is still alive. Yeah, we know that because we had the Paxless leaks that I was sent through a Facebook uh, message. I was sent the 18-page PDF file. Yep. Revealed that in the fourth wave, and then I shared it with some friends. In the midst of this slightly awkward slurring and out of central character, we get Oscar Isaac reprising his role as the upstart Easy Rider Poe. Poe is, you see, all right, that's not how you do sentence structure. You don't end a sentence with their name and then start a sentence right next to it with their name. Poe is reintroduced in the same roguish fashion he held in the first movie, showing a willful disregard on the part of the director J.J. Abrams for the lessons his character was taught in the installment. Installment. Mm. Yeah. Similarly, John Boyega as Finn is given a side plot with the what the hell is that? Dorothaki? Doraki? Dothraki? Dothraki. Which sent cackles through the audience. Is it, Are they talking about the space horse? I believe so. Space horse. Ah. Can we just refer to this as Kathleen Kennedy's relatives? Yeah, that could be very, very well, yeah. More frustratingly, he is shown as only the passing friend to Kelly Moran Tran character Rose and engineer who, in the end of the film, we were led to believe loved Finn so much that she was prepared to sacrifice her own life to teach him a lesson. Yeah, um, that was a badly written character. She's not a bad person. The actress, no. She's a very beautiful actress. She looks very good in those stunning gowns she wears to those um, galas or whatever she goes to, those Hollywood functions. And, um, you know, it's bad writing. Is that's fault. It's not the actor's bad fault. Ri- it's bad writing. It's, it, it goes a lot further than just bad writing. I mean, and, you know, that's bad costume designing, too, because you're taking somebody that doesn't look bad and you're making them look like Fred Sanford. And this guy's going to talk about The Last Jedi. I, man, okay. And The Last Jedi director, Ryan Johnson, and his name's been changed. It's Rian Roundhead. Ryan Johnson did much to show us a wider, more intriguing universe and introduced us to concepts that could free up the franchise and with little consideration for its rabid reactionary fan base. J.J. Abrams seems determined to uh, overturn this. Man, okay, um, you don't get it. You really, really, really don't get it. You didn't read any of the books, Star Wars books that came after Return of the Jedi. Um, you don't get this at all. I'll what does, the, you, the, what does the, they, the... The only thing that they managed to free up for me is money wasted at the theater. Yeah, I would say that we should unleash the guinea pigs. Yes. I am gathering the army right now. They are prepared to march at a moment's notice. Disney, I am also in the possession and the plans of a better mousetrap that will finally once and for all take you down suckers yes let's uh speed up the process on that mousetrap we're gonna need it the fifth element wait a minute just think the star wars universe could have been more than just a family drama um One thing you don't understand that you completely lack understanding is the Star Wars saga was always seen through the eyes of droids. That was the whole point. That was how the Star Wars was seen. And from their point of view, basically, is how the Star Wars movies were happening to a certain degree. And George Lucas always said that the Star Wars saga was seen through the droids' eyes. And um, I think you completely missed that. And you're comparing this with the fifth element. 
is love. Um, the fifth element. Oh, man. Let me tell you. The fifth element. That was a decent movie. It was it leaps and bounds ahead of its time with effects. Um, I would say that was probably a better movie than The Last Jedi. For sure. No, it definitely was. And I guarantee it's probably gotten a lot more airtime on regular TV than this one never will. Or The Last Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. Despite its many drawbacks, however, I shall watch The Rise of Skywalker again and enjoy it. Man, you must like slapping yourself in the face with um, bamboo fan or something, you know. Because, man, jeez. You really enjoy this. He's probably the type of person that likes to hook jumper cables up to his, uh, well, yeah, you know where. Oh, you know, you, you know, you, his, 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 you know, what's it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he probably enjoys something like that. Man. Well, thank you, Gary, for sharing this uh, article on Twitter. Hail to the fan of mess. Good morning, good night. Hail, Hail. Hail.